Unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica from the scrapbooks of Adrian Freita. Outside of the undisputed king of reggae, Bob Marley, fellow reggae legend Jimmy Cliff, perhaps only strongest claim to be a true icon of Jamaica's entertainment culture. Beside his extensive music catalogue, he has the distinction of being the star of the easily the biggest Jamaican movie of all time, The Hard of the Come, which chronicled the life of Jamaica's 1940s bad man, Reagan, who lays strong claim to being Jamaica's baddest man of all times. With The Hard of the Come set to immortalize Jimmy Cliff and the big stream for the rest of humanity, it makes the son of Somerton District in St. James, whose birth name is James Chambers, time chop forever, a legend. In this edition of Lest You Forget, we will showcase the life of Rykin, which was so beautifully played by Jimmy Cliff in the movie. The contents about Rykin came from a documentary about him, Gleaner Reports, and of course, the movie, The Harder They Come. Born Vincent Martin, popularly known as Ivanhoe, Reagan, Alan Ladd and Captain Midnight, was a Jamaican criminal who was born in 1924 and reigned terror down on Jamaicans during the 1940s. The 1940s in Jamaica was a time of abject poverty for most Jamaicans. The colonial masters ruled with an iron fist, and bad men with guns was a rarity. Vincent Martin aka Ivanhoe became a legendary outlaw and folk hero. His life was loosely depicted in the cult film The Harder They Come starring Jimmy Cliff. Ivanhoe was born in Linstead in the parish of St. Catherine, Jamaica. As most teenagers at that time, he moved to Western Kingston in search of a better life. He was described as a short man with a Napoleon complex. He walked with a bop and wore high heels to make himself appear taller. He was even said to have an effeminate voice and spoke fluently and was an avid reader of detective novels. In 1938, when Ivanhoe was just 14, he was sentenced in the Kingston Resident Magistrates Court to a dozen strokes from the Tamarind Switch for what was described as a malicious attack. Two years later, he was again in trouble. This time he was found guilty of wounding with intent and opted to pay a fine of 30 shillings instead of a 30-day sentence. In December of 1943, at age 19, he was again charged and convicted for breaking and entering. Ivanhoe served a six-month jail sentence in the St. Catherine District Prison for the offense. After his release he dropped off the police radar for three years. On February 6, 1946, Ivanhoe came back on the police radar and was again jailed for two counts of burglary and larceny and was sentenced to two years. But his troubles were just beginning as he was also ordered to serve an additional six months for legal possession of a firearm as well as another five years on a burglary charge, which tallied up to seven years in total. In 1948, just after Ivanhoe served two years, he escaped from the maximum security general penitentiary. Once free he began creating mayhem and became a menace to society for which he is well remembered in Jamaica's crime chronicles. One retired police officer described Ivanhoe as the only true bad man this country has ever seen. I was but a little boy when he was creating mayhem, but he was very well liked by the common people who saw him as somewhat of a folk hero. Even police officers were afraid of the very mention of his name, the retiree told a reporter. Ivanhoe's rise to infamy came after he attacked and killed a police officer and injured another two officers during a shootout in Hannah Town in Kingston at the Carib Hotel on Regent Street. According to reports in September 1948, Ivanhoe was holed up in the hotel room when police from the Criminal Investigation Department, acting on a tip, cordoned off the premises and closed in on the room where he was staying with a female companion. Dressed only in his underpants, Ivanhoe is reported to have barged from the room and took on the officers. During the shootout, Detective Corporal Edgar Lewis was fatally shot and his colleague, Detective H. E. L., as well as an ex-Sergeant Gallimore, were injured before Ivanhoe managed to escape. Reports also stated that Ivanhoe was shot and injured during the vicious gun battle. Detective Corporal Edgar Lewis' funeral was well attended and his killing drew the condemnation of head of state and national hero Alexander Bustamante, who was the mayor of Kingston, and a pallbearer at the ceremony. I it read, I have an arsenal of 29 shots and I am satisfied that I have made history for the criminal element in Jamaica. Don't think that I am going to kill myself because this will only serve to spoil my great record. But I hope that Detective Scott will train his men some more. I am going to show the police force what is lacking, and what I can do. The letter, was published in the Jamaica Times. A few days after writing the letter, Ivanhoe shot and killed an associate of his, 48-year-old Higgler Jonathan Thomas, in front of his scared wife, as he walked along Waltham Park Road.
Road in Kingston on Friday, September 3rd, 1948. That same day, Ivanhoe went to an acquaintance's home at 59 and a half Spanish Town Road and called him out of his home. When the man, identified as Selvan Maxwell, came out, Ivanhoe accosted him with the intention to take his life. Maxwell was lucky and escaped with his life after he overpowered Ivanhoe and disarmed him. Ivanhoe managed to escape in Maxwell's car. His infamy began to grow in the city slums. In a boastful moment he posed with his two revolvers for a photographer, whom he knew. The picture eventually wound up in the hands of the press and was published. This angered Ivanhoe and he wrote a letter to the Daily Gleaner threatening Detective Scott and the photographer, who was only identified as Mr. Brown. Ivanhoe retreated to his hideout in the bushes at Ferry in St. Catherine and laid low for six weeks. Members of the public, encouraged by the £200 reward for his capture, tipped off the cops who organized a raid on his heart in his head and several other times all over his body. He died there on the beach of Lime K. When news of Ivanhoe's demise reached the streets, thousands of persons, police and civilians alike, lined the streets from the Kingston waterfront to a morgue in Kingston. When his body, which was wrapped in a sack, arrived at the morgue, thousands more persons crammed the area to get a peek at the most infamous gunman who had caused the police to organize what was known at the time as the biggest manhunt ever. Send out one bad man! Unlike Reagan, Jimmy Cliff is still alive and well today, but his portrayal of the infamous gangster in that movie will forever make him a Jamaican legend and his story will always be one of those unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica. Unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica from the scrapbooks of Adrian Freuter. Before you go, please remember to subscribe.